again. Welcome back to Reading Destination. I'm so glad you came back. We're continuing our book, The Wind in the Willows, by Kenneth Graham. And we are now on Chapter 8. And Chapter 8 is called Toad's Adventure. Hmm, we're back to Toad again. When Toad realized that he was in a dark dungeon, he knew that this grim medieval fortress stood between him and the happy light of day. He also knew that it was unlikely that he would be able to travel the roads of England ever again. In despair, he threw himself to the ground and began to cry. He had lost all hope. He thought about how stupid he had been to steal that car. It certainly was dumb, wasn't it? For many weeks, Toad refused to eat, even though the jailer, knowing that Toad had a great deal of money, offered to arrange for certain luxuries. The jailer had a good, kind-hearted daughter. Often, she helped her father with his tasks. She couldn't bear to see poor Toad getting so thin. So she convinced her father to let her be Toad's caretaker. One day, the jailer's daughter went to see Toad. Cheer up, she said. I have brought you some dinner, hot from the oven. The delicious aroma of cabbage filled the cell. But Toad was too miserable to eat. So he continued to kick his legs in anger for some time. The jailer's daughter left him alone for a while. After she had gone, the wonderful aroma lingered. It cheered Toad. He began to hope that his friends would find a way to help him. The girl returned with hot tea and buttered toast. Toad could not resist. He began to sip the tea and nibble the toast. He dried his eyes and started talking about himself and his house and how important he was to the people who knew him. The girl could see how much good it was doing for Toad to talk about himself. Toad Hall sounds beautiful, she said with delight. It is simply magnificent, boasted Toad. Toad's spirits were restored. After that, they had many more interesting conversations. With each day, the girl grew sorrier for Toad. Being so vain, Toad mistook her sympathy for love. He even pitied her because she wasn't very pretty. They were not in the same league in Toad's opinion. He has a very high opinion of himself, doesn't he? One morning, the girl said, I have an aunt who is a washerwoman. That's nothing to be ashamed of, Toad said. Let me finish, said the girl. You talk too much, and that's a big part of your problem. I have a plan. When my aunt comes to drop off the laundry tomorrow, she will give you her dress and apron. You are very alike in many ways, particularly your figure. I think she would do this for a small fee. After all, you are rich and she is poor. Thank you, said Toad, but you don't really expect the great Toad of Toad Hall to walk around dressed as a common washerwoman, do you? Hmm, you ungrateful animal, said the girl with disgust. Then you can just stay here forever. Toad felt ashamed. Despite his faults, Toad was honest and always willing to admit he was wrong. He thanked the kind girl and asked her to make the arrangements with her aunt. The next evening, the plan was carried out. The aunt gave Toad a dress and an apron in exchange for a few gold coins. She asked that she be gagged and tied up to pretend that she was robbed of the clothing. Then she wouldn't lose her job. Toad liked this suggestion because he would be leaving a legend behind. 
After the girl and her aunt had helped Toad into the dress, the girl giggled and said, You're the very image of my aunt. Only I'm sure you never looked half so respectable. Now goodbye and good luck. So Toad set off with a trembling heart but a firm footstep. After walking through endless courtyards, he finally passed the huge front door and found himself in the fresh air of the outer world. He was free! Toad walked toward the nearest town, not knowing what his next move would be. Then he saw some red and green lights and heard engines. He was approaching a railway station. Just what I need, he thought. He went to the station to buy a ticket to stop nearest to Toad Hall, but when he went to reach into the pocket of his coat, he realized he was wearing a dress. An impatient line started to form behind him. Horrified, he remembered that he had left his coat, wallet, keys, watch, and money behind in the prison. I've left my wallet at home, he said to the clerk. Please, give me a ticket and I will send the money tomorrow. The clerk just laughed and asked him to step aside. Worse still, the clerk addressed him as good woman, which angered Toad. It was hard for poor Toad to have found a way home, yet have no money or friends to help him. His escape would be discovered soon, and he would be captured. Toad began to cry. Just then, the engine driver noticed him. Hello, ma'am, said the engine driver. What's the problem? I have lost all my money, Toad said. I am a poor washerwoman and I can't pay for a ticket. I must get home tonight. My children will be hungry. Mm. Let's make a deal, said the driver. My wife is tired of washing my shirts. If you will wash a few shirts for me when you get home, you can ride for free. Ooh, do you think Toad will wash the shirts? Hmm. Toad agreed and happily climbed up into the cab. Toad knew that he couldn't wash shirts properly, but he would send the driver enough money to cover the cost once he got home. At last, the train began to move out of the station. As the train moved faster and faster, Toad knew that he was getting closer and closer to Toad Hall. Soon, he would have good food, a warm bed, and the company of friends. He was so giddy with happiness that he started to skip around. They had covered many miles when Toad noticed the driver looked puzzled. He was leaning over the side of the engine and listening to something. Then he climbed on top of the coals to get a better look. That's strange, said the driver. This is the last train running tonight, but I hear another train behind us. Uh-oh. Toad stopped his silly skipping at once. He became very agitated when he thought about who might be on the train behind them. Who do you think it might be? <gasps> then the driver called out. I can see it. Another train is chasing us at a very high speed. The engine is crowded with police officers and wardens. They want us to stop. Toad fell to his knees, sobbing. He begged the driver, Please save me. I confess, I am not a washerwoman and I have no children. I am the well-known Mr. Toad of Toad Hall and I have just escaped from prison. If those fellows recapture me, I'll have to go back to the miserable dungeon. The driver asked, What were you in prison for? Nothing much, said the blushing Toad. I only borrowed a car while its owners were at lunch. I didn't mean to steal it, really. The driver looked sternly at Toad. You have done a wicked thing. 
I should hand you over, he said. But you are in distress and I won't desert you. The sight of an animal crying always gets to me. Don't worry. You'll see. We'll beat them. Together they piled more coals into the furnace. The engine leaped, but the other train was still gaining on them. The driver sighed. Toad, he said, I am afraid this won't work. There's only one thing to do. I will go full speed through that tunnel up ahead. The police will slow down for fear of running off the tracks. Once we are through the tunnel, I will put the brakes on as hard as I can. Then you will jump off into the woods. Hide in the woods before they get through the tunnel and are able to see you. Then I'll go full speed again. And that's exactly what they did. Toad jumped up and rolled into a mound of leaves. Luckily, he wasn't hurt. So he picked himself up and scampered into the woods to hide. He peeked out and saw his train speeding away. Then the other train burst through the tunnel, still chasing the first train. Toad laughed. But when he realized how late and cold it was, he stopped laughing. He was in a strange place and had no money. He didn't want to leave the shelter of the trees, so he went into the woods. He found the creatures of the woods to be harsh and unfriendly. An owl swooped too close and brushed his shoulder with its wing. A fox passed and made fun of him for being a washerwoman. Finally, he was so tired, hungry, and cold that Toad decided to make a bed of leaves for himself in the hollow of a nearby tree. There he fell fast asleep. And that is the end of chapter eight. What do you suppose is gonna happen next? Well, we'll just have to find out, won't we? I hope you're enjoying this book. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time a new video has been posted. And above all, be sure to share with all of your friends, okay? Bye-bye for now.